Welcome to session 5 of Aerodynamic and Aerospace Training Course. Uh, in this session we are going to talk about the fluid structure interaction uh, as known as FSI and we'll discuss how FSI can be effective in aerospace projects. So at first let's see the topics and outlines that we are going to discuss in this session. So first we are going to talk about the fluid structure interaction and classification of FSI in aerospace. And then we have topic in fluid structure interaction and the method of solving fluid structure interaction and interfacing CFD and FEM solver. Uh, at the end we have a summary of what we have talked about in this session. So as you know FSI has a wide range of applications in industries and uh, different industries but the one thing that we need to understand in the aerospace is the topic of in the topic of FSI is how we can analyze this problem in our aero shapes so we have to approach as we have uh, all the FSI problems have uh, we have to approach as one way and two way FSI so the one way FSI also can be used in aerospace projects uh, for example uh, for the aerospace uh, uh, for example you have a wing and you want to see how the airflow deflects the wing in normal uh, force normal force around the wing and uh, to be simple one way FSI uh, this in case we have analysis and multidisciplinary analysis so in this analysis we have fluid dynamics which calculates the flow variables uh, the wall of the, wall, the, wall of the body uh, are rigid in this uh, fluid work could be unsteady and this means that uh, we have just absorbed the force generated by the, by the fluid dynamics on the walls and not the effect of the deflection of the structure itself uh, to do that we assume that body walls are rigid and by that we can also see if we want to have a steady or unsteady because this, because this uh, normal load uh, can be steady and we can then have our structure be analyzed as a steady in the one way uh, so another way in dynamics the motion of rigid body under known loads so for the dynamics of the structure ones we have our solid domain could be under uh, known loads and this is not varying by the time so it would be steady or if you need it can be unsteady so this is the one of the points in the one way FSI problems that you can calculate them and simulate them based on the steady state steady simulation steady state and see the effect of the fluid force uh, for the elasticity, the deformation of non rigid body under steady force and moments can be absorbed, which means you can see the wings, for example, the wing, wing bending due to aerodynamic forces, uh, which we talked about how to calculate them in previous sessions. So, as we talked about the one way, then we have a two way FSI. The two FSI gives us a multidisciplinary analysis. Uh, for example, for the fluid dynamics, uh, the motion of rigid body could be under a fluid dynamics load, which means we can model the uh, known load and on the known load on the solid body based on the fluid dynamic uh, calculations, and we can transport them and apply them on the structure itself and see how the rigid body bends and moves. Uh, for the structural dynamics or dynamics of the model, the model of elastic body is under a given unsteady load, which means in the two-way uh, FSI analysis, uh, you, can't ha you can't have a steady, it should be only unsteady simulation process. Uh, because we want to see how our fluid acts on the structural uh, uh, structure and how structure returns the act as, as react on the fluid itself 
and coupling these two will return us a better understanding and a model which is known as two-way FSI. So now we have a new concept called as air elasticity. So air elasticity is the motion of the body under fluid dynamics and load which are affected by the body uh, deflection and the velocities which means the both movement of the body structure and the fluid field around it are important. And now you can see we change our fluid structure uh, called in the air elasticity section is a total two-way two-way two -way FSI. So for example you can name it as two-way FSI but this is actually an air elasticity and if you want to do an do an air elasticity simulation uh, you are exactly doing a two-way and these two concepts are not separated together so as you as we previously said on the two-way FSI for the elasticity we have again fluid dynamics motion of the rigid body on the fluid dynamics load and our structural dynamics which are the motion of the elastic elastic bodies under a given anesthetic loads so now we can define elasticity again the motion of the body under fluid dynamics so this would be our aero elasticity which is the most common use of FSI in the aerospace projects as you see in this chart we have aero aero elasticity known as the interaction of three parts actually not only fluid dynamics and structural dynamics in aerospace project for example when you are simulating an airplane and you want to have a roll program for example you want to have a roll five degree of roll and you need to deflect your ailerons so you have flight dynamics planning this area too so if we have the fluid dynamics the structural dynamics and flight dynamics and we have intersect them together we have an area called as aero servo elasticity which we want to use fsi to understand how these complex movements will affect on the fluid round and the structure of the airplane itself uh, as we said before, air server elasticity involves fluid dynamics and structural dynamics plus controls. The controls gains are related and affected on the control surfaces. For example, you have a deflection in your rudder, you have deflection in your elevator, and you have deflection uh, for your other surface controllers. And these will affect on the structural structural parts of the body, uh, body of the airplane, fuselage, wings, and else. And these change only are not due to movement of the control services and also be affected by the fluid dynamics around it and also the deflection of these control surfaces could act on the body itself so the main question here is uh, we can obtain the pressure around our body of the airplane for example as a wing or its carry-ons with the CFD ones so we can see how the pressure distributes around the bow for example this wall could be airplane fuselage could be its parts wings or else so why we need the FSI too because we have that already the pressure distributions so we want to see there is a more complex area in the flight dynamics if we want to add on to these uh, those we have talked about the previous ones we have aerodynamic forces we have aerodynamic derivatives and else we are called a new area for the flight dynamics which includes flight dynamics fluid dynamics and rigid body dynamics so in these cases uh, for simple uh, flight dynamics which we have only flight dynamics one and we are neglecting the rigid body dynamics uh, we required more than 100 seconds of the simulation which means meshing and CFD rounds and also we don't need the rigid body dynamics to be solved or its PDEs and we reduce the cost of the, our simulation production cost uh, and 
we have only the flight dynamics which we can use to estimate our flight dynamics which we talked about in the previous section but what if we add fluid dynamics plus rigid body dynamics so now we have our fully coupled flight dynamics fully completed flight dynamics we have coupled flight dynamics which now requires more than 100 seconds of the meshing and CFT rounds plus we need 100 seconds for FPM which means we have to be we have to generate regenerate FPM meshes and do FPM runs by that we can model completely our body of the airplane movement and we can estimate more precisely so it would be the full redefinition of the flight dynamics which means fluid dynamics plus rigid body dynamics so now we change the traditional meaning of the flight dynamics which is about the all about the derivatives and its equations and we are relating it to a CFT section which we can use our CFT and simulation tools to obtain our performance on the airplane and the handling quality or its stability for further analysis would be primitive for uh, obtained from the CFD after that we have something called as buffeting which is when which happens when the airflow separates uh, from the structure and this occurs and results on structure vibration causing buffets so this kind of the reverse of the flutter and flutter is generated due to dynamic forces and the buffet, is buffet uh, generates based on the structural vibrations other that we have a limited li limited cycle oscillations which typically happens when the floor itself is unsteady and maybe a hysteresis or we could have a simulate we could we can also actually we could not be really related one uh, we have that ability to control reversal and to see and simulate control reversals which is on a 10 times reverse purpose of the control due to the large reflection of the structure for example you want to have a five degree roll you want to to do that you should have for example 10 degree deflection on your ailerons so if your deflection on the structure be too much uh, too much then your deflection on your control surfaces won't be affected and it could also be resulted on a negative side roll so imagine you want to roll in the left side and by the do the large deflection you give the order for the five degree and aircraft rolls on the left side uh, this could be uh, very common on the aircrafts that have a weak structure or they don't uh, they don't analyze the air elasticity very completely and see how it effect on the structure of the control surfaces so this we could this could be a new area to research because it's uh, actually new factors for the safety as you want to follow so for more information you can see on the CS documentations which is a very common and new topic which are talking about in the aircraft design process so it control reversal about the hot topics here for the governing equations for FSI we have a governing equations called dynamic fluid structure interactions as we define the fluid, uh, fluid plus rigid dynamics and flight dynamics which are problems and equations on three different fields so for the fluid section we have we're all familiar with it we have a navier stokes equation for compressible, uh, compressible flow uh, as you see in this chart there are same uh, navier stokes equation with any change and for the L formation which dynamic meshes the velocity is expressed relative to the movement of the mesh so when you have a deflection on your uh, on your structure the dynamic mesh moves its nodes in different velocities which are related to the 
movement of the mesh cal calculated by the process so we see how much our fluid section have the velocity that do not have velocity and if we minus it from the uh, u that mesh moves we could have the total velocity related to the mesh or we can call it u which are used in the equations as you see and as you see for the structure side we have the governing equations for the structure which are all known from the university uh, lectures and on you see that you have the equations all with no changes and we can apply it and use them in the FSI side so damping within the structure as the approximate for the rigid damping uh, as a non-liner combination of the stiffness and mass matrices and the mesh model as a fixtures and pseudo structural problem having its own dynamics and governed by the equation as you see below and in this equation K is a pseudo stiffness matrix matrix defined for the whole mesh and D is the displacement of the structural matrix and this could relate it to the F the force transfer uh, over time as you see the picture we have our initial starting time both for the fluid and the structure and these delta T's will be calculated in each time step for the fluid itself and the structure itself and final results will be a different shape for our aero shape from the starting and this change due to aerodynamic forces and effect of them and traction of them on this structure and again the deflection of the structure have its own effects on the fluid dynamics and it will be resolved by the pressing of time so for the two-way and elastic problems and uh, now you should be understand very well that why we need to model as on a steady and it cannot be modeled as a steady ones. And at last we want to know how the Fluent uh, software does that. So Fluent, Fluent software in help with the help of the ANSYS structural uh, can be modeled can be used to model the FSI bonds. So when you have your fluid Solver and your structural solver coupled together and uh, you want to transmit the data between The fluid section and the structural one. So as you know in the two way we have previously Mentioned it and uh, these deflections are not the same and the meshes are could possibly penetrate each other or have the gap between itself so the FSI requires pressure load which calculated from the fluid software fluid solver and uh, that are transmitted from the fluid side of the interface so we have a inter interface between the fluid and solid section so the similarly of the motion of the structure needs to be transferred to the fluid side so to do that we have an interface and it interface generates a coupled mesh and the data transfers from these nodes and the overlapped or gaps between them can be kind of be trick of the software can be resolved and smoothed by the its constant adding to it so there are several methods to transfer data between the non-matching meshes and the fluent uses a smoothing constant to do that so it's data that so the data are transmitted as there is an FVM method and FEM method uh, if you are familiar with it and uh, the data on the FVM method are calculated in the middle of the mesh but in the FVM they are transferred on the nodes itself so in the FVM data from the mesh itself are transmitted in the interface of the node on the FVM solver and by using that we can overdo the overlapping and gapping between these two interfaces and these two domains to benefit from Mr. CFT services including simulation, consultation and training Visit our website or contact us via info at mr-cfd.com.